What makes those two positions maybe the most critical positions on the offensive line? Well, everything starts with the center. Like if you can't get the quarterback center exchange, you obviously can't get the playoffs. So that is obviously a huge deal just to make sure that that center position is locked up. And right now we're rotating a bunch of different players at that position. So that will be something that will continue to go through all the way to fall camp, just kind of figuring out who that guy is going to be. And then once we make that decision, then try to get that guy a little bit more rhythm with, with the quarterback. But right now we've been, we've been fortunate with the, with the guys that we've had taking snaps at that position just to get them get them rolling, get them comfortable, get them, get them in the flow. And then um, left tackle is the blind side, like so it protects that quarterback when he's dropping back there. And we're really, really fortunate. We have some quarterbacks when the pocket breakdown, they can escape and make a play. It's hard to death. They can't see that it's breaking down. So, and, and losing uh, John, like again, the bit, not what he did on the field, off the field is where we're gonna miss him the most. And that's a void that we're trying to fill. And, he was such a dominant leader that it's going to have to be by committee. We feel that boy. That's not going to be just one person that takes over. So, Cade and, and Ben Dooley and Garrett Kern, like those guys, are going to have to fill that spot. And it's not going to be on one person's shoulder to kind of to kind of fill and be OJ because he's kind of an irreplaceable guy. So it'll be it'll be a couple of different guys that kind of fill all the stuff that he that he did for you, the program. You played center yourself. I mean, how tough is it for a young guy to come in here and take over that spot right away, especially a freshman like Jason Steelers? It's like mind blowing. Yeah. Like I can remember my first spring, I almost got kicked off the team. Like <laughs> they go, get that guy. Like, this guy's terrible. You know, it just takes time. And again, it's one of those things where, like, if a receiver drops the ball, you know, no big deal, right? If a linebacker misses a tackle, not great. We'll coach him up. But like, if you can't even get the ball to quarterback to get the play started, all other uh, guys on the field don't get that rep. You know what I mean? So like just even guys covering, even if it isn't a pass play, like everyone misses the rep. So that's why that little part of the game is, is crucial and something we all take for granted. You know, like he has to get that ball back to the quarterback every single time as someone's trying to knock him back into the quarterback. So some of those guys just have to take take ownership and take a lot of pride in doing it. And no one's going to say good job on the 70 snaps that got back there. They're going to say what the heck on the one that didn't. So. That's something that I just have to live with. In terms of the center, can you talk about some of the guys? You talked about the rotation. Who are the guys in that rotation on center? Yeah, so we have we have a couple guys. So Nate Cardona is taking reps. Jason Steele is taking reps. Mason Randolph snapping. We're going to get Garrett snapping um, a Does little he, bit. Do you have any hands back there snapping? Garrett. Yeah. He we we snapped. A, he did a bunch of snaps in the fall. Okay. So just when we were kind of thin, I forget one week of those. He took a bunch of reps during okay. during practice. So, so Cardona Steele. Mason Garrett, mm -hmm. those four. By, yep, by committee. Yeah, so those, we'll kind of, all kind of. Yep. One, one A, one A. We're all mm -hmm. kind of just in rotation right now. Mm -hmm. And then on left tackle, you mentioned Cade, Ben, and Garrett. Are those three guys rotating there, or, or you got more? Or just yeah. So Cage, Cage Casey's another guy that's that's rotating that tackle. And and the way we try to teach it is not just to, like you play right guard, you play left tackle. So those guys, as you guys have all seen, like we have to be. Yeah. fluid and flexible and be able to plug and play guys so it's trying to find the best five and then once you kind of find six and seven then it's like okay what can the six do is he going to be a swing where you can play tackle guard or is he going to be a center like it's trying to figure out what those what those guys do like we had will last year he was a great great offense alignment to come in and plug and play at a bunch of different positions so that's what it's finding the five but it's just as important to find six and seven where does kate fit in right now where is he working out kate or cage kate, kate so he's Awesome, like he's we really really happy with him and and he again he needs to not only do it on the field but he needs to all the leadership and that's what he's doing a really really good job of all those intangible leadership making sure people are studying the film and st getting extra time in the film room and 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 going over the playbook and they install the night before so he's doing a really really good job at that. I know there's a lot to work. But do you visualize him as your starting left tackle? Uh, we haven't really, we kind of, he can kind of go back and forth. So there was a point last year we almost talked about in fall flipping him and OJ just to, for, for those guys just being comfortable. So, yeah. um, I don't, I, it doesn't really matter to me personally, yeah. you know, so it'd be one of those things where we just have to give him enough reps at both where he can play both. And Cage certainly had, I think he had some live reps at left tackle a little bit. Yeah, he got a bunch of reps last year. So he's like that new rule is awesome. So he's able to play and he actually played in five games because we had the, exemption the transfer portal so he played in a bunch of different games played tight end played tackle so it's perfect we were able to kind of develop him get him reps and hopefully kind of like on that mason randolph track where bring them along their red shirt year get them a little bit of action and then they can step in and 
and be a really good player for us. What is it about Cade at left tackle other than that he just might be your best guy? Is there certain things he brings to the position, left tackle versus right tackle, that impress you? Yeah, it's, it's more it's just like those little things of just getting in that stance and being ready to drive off that leg. It's just a timing and a rhythm thing. So it, that, that would be the only issue is just what he feels comfortable with. And if we have two guys, like what makes the whole unit the best, you know what I mean? So it's the communication with the guards. That's a big part of it too, just how those guys interact with each other. So there's a couple physical factors like their stains, but there's also a couple just who's kind of vibing and gelling with the, with the guard on their side. You mentioned, you've mentioned six, seven, eight guys in rotation, and there's obviously a lot of crossover. What, in terms of out, outside of these maybe eight names, what, what guards are you playing in the rotation? What are your main guard rotation guys? So we've been playing, Garrett's been playing guard, Van Dooley's been playing guard, um, Roger's another really good young player for us that's been, that's been repping at the, at the guard position. So um, it's, we've been, we have had Rick Moore, has been playing tackle, has been playing some guard. So it's just, again, bouncing those guys around and just seeing where they kind of fit, fit natural. Rick is a good example. He's kind of in that Garrett mode. When you first see Rick and Garrett, you're like, mm, this guy's probably not a guard. I like, go, oh, okay, this guy's a big guard, but he's, he fits. He does a really good job there. So that's what we're kind of seeing if those guys kind of break the mold and can play inside. <coughs> ben Dooley, there's a note that he was a horsepower winner. Um, I think that's in your weight room. Yep, it's like lifter of the week. Yeah, the type of offseason he's having, and maybe just his ceiling. I mean, can he be a first-team all-league player, you think, here, Ben Dooley? There's so much goes into like being a first team. Just there's a lot of luck that goes in there, staying healthy and you know having a good quarterback and some of the things that are with, not within his control. But he's definitely put himself in the best position to have a great season. I mean, he is really working extremely, extremely hard. And again, he's taken that leadership role as well, where he's studying extra film. He's helping the young players. He's he's uh, just around the facility more, just to make sure that he's completely integrated and ready to go. When, uh, when the season starts. OJ was at the combine last week, and his uh, three cone and shuttle drill was really impressive. I, mean, I think his shuttle drill was the second fastest of any lineman there. I mean, what does that say about his athleticism? And did you guys see that when he was here? Yeah, that's. I think uh, like OJ is going to surprise some people once he gets there. Um, just his change of direction, his lateral mobility. He he does that really well, especially for an offensive lineman. It's one thing to change direction. When you're running like a sprint, there's nothing to change direction, maintain posture, be able to strike another object. So that's where he does a really, really good job. So I'm so excited for him just to get at a place where he gets drafted or free agent or whatever, just to get in a building and integrate himself. Because I know people are going to love just all the stuff that he brings to, to a franchise. So really, really happy for him. There's some chatter out there that you know, he might be playing guard in the National Football League. I know that's out of your control. but. Uh, maybe as a guy who knows football, can you kind of explain that transition? And can you see OJ making that transition? Yeah, he can. I mean, he's he can play any position. And he always used to joke. He always used to give everyone grief. Like, hey, all, he would sneak in and play guard for like, you know, four plays. Just be like, guard's easy. Like, he'd practice sneak in, in practice. <clears throat> like, he'd sneak in and like snap the ball. Like, center's easy. Like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Like, this is easy. So <laughs> he's got that, that personality and he's not going to get flustered. So Ezra Cleveland's the same thing, right? Ezra That's Cleveland goes to Vikings and he plays guard. So I think... You know, I wasn't here with Ezra, so I didn't get to see him, but I think that it's a very similar transition. When the NFL guys say that, what do you think? What do they see in OJ that they, that they think that he'd be a better guard than a tackle? Just Probably tackle. just his mobility, right? Like, at the NFL lineman, I was watching that comment. Those guys, I was like, oh my gosh, these guys are genetic freak shows. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So. He is just a tick below those guys is probably what they're, you know, I'm their coaching NFL, so I don't know. So sure. they're probably saying, hey, this guy's extremely tough. He's extremely physical in the run game. Like, he can be a great guard. And defense alignment are taller in the NFL, so, like, now he doesn't have the leverage issue that he would maybe in college where some of the defense alignment are shorter. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, some of those 49er defense alignment, are, they're 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, you know. They're super long, so you can have those guards that match up where if he's going against – you know, Herb, who's six foot, that just presents leverage issues. So you don't have to worry about that in the NFL. Everyone's. So we're seeing a lot taller guards in the league now. You've noticed this, yeah? I think so. Yep. And just the way it's going, like those guys are really good in pass pro and mm -hmm. can cover ground. So it just kind of makes it makes sense. And and if you got NFL, these guys are bigger in general. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just genetic freak show winners. <laughs> yeah. Well, one over. Yeah. yeah.